Saudi viewers, welcome to every TV English news broadcast. With me, Bersa Bataghla, and following other major headlines for today. Training on radio and television digitalization. The number of voluntary blood donors increasing in the Northern Red Sea region. Putin says Russia considering withdrawal from Green Deal. And seven die as cyclone battles towards western India. On your local reports, the Ministry of Information, in cooperation with the Embassy of the People's Republic of China in Eritrea and Chinese radio and television, organized three weeks training program to 71 of its staff members. The training that was provided from 25 May to 14 June was in continuation of the training program that was delivered by the Chinese radio and television in 2019 and includes shooting methods for high-definition cameras, digital non-linear editing, digital terrestrial TV broadcasting, FM, SFM application and digital audio broadcasting, as well as insights into monitoring and playout systems. The theoretical and practical training that was provided by Chinese experts on modern media technology, speaking at the graduation event, Mr. Yamane Gabramaskal, Minister of Information, expressing his warm congratulations to all those who contributed to the success of the training program, said that the training program was conducted in accordance with the preliminary assessment on the courses and modules undertaken by professional experts in the ministry. Mr. Kai Zhe, Ambassador of the People's Republic of China in Eritrea, on his part said that Chinese radio and television digital transformation has gone through a long period of exploration and practice and has achieved the accumulation of key technologies and experiences. Ambassador Kai further noted that the purpose of the training program is to share relevant experiences and further strengthen cooperation between China and Eritrea. Representative of the trainees pointing out that the training will have significant contribution in upgrading their skills and enhance the quality of media production expressed commitment to live up to the expectations to that regard. Mr. Ahmed Jafar, head of the National Voluntary Blood Donors Association branch in the Northern Red Sea region, reported that as a result of the sustainable awareness raising activities, the number of voluntary blood donors in the region is increasing from time to time. Mr. Ahmed made the report at a meeting organized in connection with 14 June, International Blood Donors Day. Mr. Ahmed went on to say that the reason why 14 June International Blood Donors Day is being observed yearly is to express appreciation to those that are voluntarily contributing blood with a view to save lives with their renewable blood and to encourage others to follow the noble example. Dr. Henok Takie, head of the Ministry of Health branch in the region, on his part commanding those that are voluntarily donating blood in group and individual levels, called for reinforced participation and contribution in the effort to ensure blood supply in the health facilities. International Blood Donors Day was also observed in the subzones of Ginda and Nafa. Second round of cervical cancer vaccination program has been conducted in Sanafi subzone from 29 May to 2 June. According to Mr. Asir Alazar, head of the health service in the subzone, over 4,300 from 5 to 14 years old girls have been vaccinated from 33 schools, 8 health facilities, as well as from 15 temporary centers. Pointing out that cervical cancer is one of the big health concerns, Mr. Asir said that the vaccination has the potential of controlling the prevalence of the disease by 95%. Mr. Asir also called on the public and other concerned institutions to identify those that could not come to the vaccination centers due to various reasons and encouraged them to take advantage of the opportunity being provided. Mr. Asir also expressed appreciation to the voluntary village health personnel, health practitioners, teachers and influential individuals for their contribution in the successful implementation of the vaccination program. On your last local report, 
the Human Resources Development Office at the Northern Red Sea region organized one-week training program to 46 members of the Ginda Administration Office, including 18 females on planning and administration. The objective of the training program was to develop the capacity of the staff members and enable them to provide timely and effective administrative service to the public. Pointing out that the training was part of the effort to develop the overall capacity of the people in the civil service, Mr. Omer Yahya, administrator of the subzone, called on the trainees to apply the training they were provided in providing timely and effective service to the public. The trainees, on their part, commanding for the training opportunity they were provided, expressed readiness to live up to the expectations. The view is still to come as your international reports after the short break. Welcome back. President Vladimir Putin said on Tuesday that Russia was considering withdrawing from the Black Sea grain deal, saying that Moscow had been cheated of implementation of the parts of the accord that concerned its own exports. In a televised meeting with pro-Kremlin war correspondents, Putin said the deal was intended to help friendly countries in Africa and Latin America, but that Europe was the largest importer of Ukrainian grain and this was providing a key source of foreign currency to Kyiv. Putin said he would discuss the future of the grain deal with some African leaders who were expected to visit Russia, adding that Moscow was ready to supply grain for free to the world's poorest countries. The deal was brokered last July by the UN and Turkey and allows for the safe export of grain from several Ukrainian ports on the Black Sea. The West has not imposed sanctions on Russian grain and other food exports, but they have been hampered by other restrictions on insurance and other areas. On your final report, classified as a very severe cyclonic storm, Biparjoy is expected to land around Thursday evening between Mandvi in India's Gujarat province and Karachi in southern Pakistan. Meteorologists predict maximum sustained wind speeds of 125 and 135 kilometers per hour, gusting to 150 kilometers per hour. 20,500 people have been evacuated from coastal districts. High waves in the Arabian Sea, accompanied by heavy rains and gusting winds, pounded Gujarat's coastal areas, uprooting trees and resulting in a wall collapse that killed three people in Kitschk and Rajkot districts. Four boys drowned in rough seas off the western Indian financial hub of Mumbai on Tuesday as India began evacuating people from coastal areas, two days before a cyclone is expected to make landfall. Eight districts in coastal Gujarat are expected to be affected, the state government said. Fishing has been suspended until Friday and schools have declared holidays. DVOS and now a quick recap of the major headlines. Training on radio and television digitalization. Number of voluntary donors increasing in the Northern Red Sea region. Putin says Russia considering withdrawal from grain deal. And seven die as the cyclone barrels towards western India. The viewers, that was it for today. Thanks for watching.